Let me tell you about what the most difficult time upon this Ummah was. If you gather all the suffering of the Muslim world today, it does not compare with a fraction of what the Muslim Ummah went under the Mongols. History records that there were only two generals who never lost a battle. One was Genghis Khan and the other was Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu, the sword of Allah. When Genghis Khan and his descendants, they ransacked, they decimated the Muslim world. And this is no exaggeration. Western historian mentioned they reached Poland, they reached Bulgaria, they reached Moscow. But they mentioned that what they did to the Muslim world was unparalleled in cruelty. When they took Bukhara, the narrations mentioned they gathered every single Muslim in the masjids and they butchered them. When they took Samarkand, they gathered the Muslims outside Samarkand and then every single Muslim was butchered and then they cut off their heads and they made pyramids out of their heads. When they took Gurgan Juwaini, the famous historian mentions that there were 50,000, 50,000 Mongol soldiers. Each one had been given 24 Muslims to execute. And then after that, they marched upon where? They marched upon the Muslim Caliphate, Baghdad. Baghdad was the most beautiful city in the Muslim world, if not the most beautiful city in the world. Mustasim was the Caliph. And when Halugu reached the outskirts of Baghdad, Mustasim consulted his advisors. And they said, the best thing is that you go and ask for terms. And Halugu has made it clear, said, if you are going to come out, don't come out by yourself. Bring your advisors with you, bring your ulama with you. So Mustasim came out with 700 men and Halugu only allowed 18 to enter into the tent. And they took the rest. This was the cream of the crop of Baghdad and they butchered every single one. And now Mustasim is standing in the court of the Mongol prince. And the same Mustasim, people would come to his court. He would rebuke, he would chastise. He's shaking in front of Halugu. And then Halugu mentions that I'm going to keep you alive for a while. And the reason that they kept him alive is that they wanted him to go back into Baghdad and tell his men to put their weapons down. So they took him back to Baghdad. And when he had told the people of Baghdad to put their weapons down, the narrations mentioned they brought his three children in front of him and then they butchered them. Then they brought his sisters in front of him and in front of his eyes they killed his sisters. And then they gathered the ulama and they began to kill all the Sunni ulama. And then Halugu said that the blood of the Muslims is halal for the next 40 days. They unrelentingly butchered the Muslim for 40 days. In those days, you didn't have machine guns. They would make the Muslims line up and they would pluck them like you pluck a chicken from a poultry farm. And then they would slaughter them. For 40 days this went on. The Muslims were so petrified. The narrations mentioned that a Mongol woman would enter into a Muslim home and she would kill every single individual and nobody would fight her back. A Mongol woman would tell a group of Muslim men, don't move from here. And they wouldn't move from there. And she would go home and she would bring a sword and she would butcher every single one. Narration mentioned that one Mongol would kill 40 children after killing their mothers. The entire population of Baghdad was close to the entire population of Birmingham. And half of the population was destroyed. And after 40 days, Halugu came into Baghdad and he gave an order that this killing should be stopped. And many of the Muslims had dug graves and they were hiding in these graves. Many ate dogs, cats, even corpses to survive. This was the situation 
And then Halugu said to Mustasim, he said, bring me your wealth. So he bought him his wealth. He said, no, bring me the wealth which is hidden. And in the middle of the palace there had a hawd. And underneath was the treasure which had been gathered for the last 500 years. For the last 500 years, the Abbasid Caliphs had hid their wealth there. In one day, it went up. And then they imprisoned Mustasim and they starved him. And Mustasim asked for some food. And Halugu sent him a platter with gold upon it. And he said, what am I going to do with this gold? He sent it back. And then Halugu went to him. And look at this, this is a non-Muslim. He's telling the Muslim king. He said, if you can't eat it, then why did you hoard it for? If you couldn't eat it, why did you hoard it for? Why did you give it to your men? So they were ready to die for you. And then he took him and he showed him the big gates of Baghdad. He said, what good are these big metal gates when there is no men to defend them? Why didn't you break these gates and make lances out of them and give them to your men? Mustasim said, it's Qadrullah. And Halugu said, I will show you Qadrullah. And they rolled him up in a carpet and then they had him trampled by the horses. 800,000 Muslims died, 800,000. The Darul Hikmah, the greatest Muslim library in the world, millions of books were ransacked, thrown into the Euphrates until the Euphrates went black with the ink. Black with the ink. And Halugu found it so difficult to stay in Baghdad because the stench of the dead corpses that he moved out of Baghdad. This is what happened with the Muslims. But then let's ask ourselves a question. How was it possible that in a period of 80 years, the same barbaric Mongols became Muslims, they became ambassadors, because there were men and women who carried on the dawah, even in this state. Nothing perturbed them. People died for this dawah. The Sahaba died to promote and propagate this deen. The women in the time of the Mongols were at the forefront of Dawah.